Combining music and flying, this is always a great idea. And it's even better when the composer is a pilot at the same time. Get Up In The Air is the name of the piano music composed by Nareen Malkumjan. She played this piece on her own and trained as an aerobatic pilot in one unique video clip. Nareen became a certified commercial pilot flying aerobatics, single and multi-engine aircraft and she also became an ESA certified flight instructor. Her mission is to inspire women to fly, help them wear confidence, courage, knowledge and skills as their pilot suit and fly for gender equality, diversity and inclusion. Maybe someday I should mix my skydiving and painting passions in one video clip. What do you think? Let me know. Anyway, Nareen, you're not only inspiring women, you're inspiring everybody. My name is Regan Tetlow and this is the beginning of the best aviation programme online. Stay with us for another episode of Esports News. Within just two days from now, a really big event for paragliders is going to start in Brazil. Baixo Guandu City will be the host of another stage for the Paragliding World Cup 2022 season. Baixo Guandu is one of the best places for a competition in a country full of amazing places to fly. It has been a favourite World Cup destination since we first headed there back in 2013. Subsequent competitions were held there in 2015, 18 and a very successful 9-task super final in 2019. The thermals are relatively big and not too strong, usually 2 to 3 meters per second and often marked by clouds. All of this adds up to lots of options for the pilots to choose from for transitions. Organisers plan the 7 days of competition in the race to goal system plus one free training day. We'll bring you the final results after the competition. So here's a story with huge amounts of adrenaline and danger. Red Bull Air Force members Luke Aikens and Andy Farrington are aiming to make history next month when they attempt a death-defying feat, thousands of feet above the ground. On the 24th of April, Aikens and Farrington will try to switch planes mid-air in a stunt at Sawtooth Airport in Eloy, Arizona. That can be seen exclusively on Hulu according to a press release from Red Bull. The planes will be completely empty and facing the ground when Aikens and Farrington attempt the daring switch, which will air during a three-hour livestream event. Aikens called his plane swap the natural progression and accumulation of his life's work as a professional both in the air as a pilot and skydiver and on the ground as an innovator. Well guys, I'll be watching this for sure, keeping our fingers crossed for success. Do you feel the need for speed? If yes, I've got good news for you. Tickets are now on sale for the 2022 Steel National Championship Air Races in Reno, USA. The event is slated from September the 14th to the 18th at Stead Airport. Reno, as the event is known in aviation circles as the world's fastest motorsport and is also part airshow. This year, military performances will include F-22s, F-18s, flown by some of the most skilled pilots in the world. There are seven racing classes, Formula One, T6, Unlimited, Jet Racing, Biplane, Sport and Stall Drag. Some of the races can reach speeds of more than 500 miles per hour. Among the planned activities are also drone flying and flight simulators for youngsters. My first special guest this week is a big name in the Scandinavian world of base jumping and skydiving and his full-time life in airsports is divided into three areas, representing Norway in competitions where he is the reigning world champion and ranked number one by the International Airsports Federation. Second part is videography for commercials, movies and documentaries and a huge part of his time is also spent coaching the next generation to be safer participants in the sport. Let's catch up with the one and the only Espen Fadness. How how has your last twelve months been? Tell me about your last twelve months. <laughs> wow, that's quite a question. Yeah, so if 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 I go if I go back twelve months now, we uh, me and uh, Amber Corte and Andreas Hamby were deeply occupied in the preparation for the World Championships in Tanai in Russia, where we wanted to compete in wings of acrobatic for Norway. And um, 
the whole year leading up to the World Championships was uh, very much focused on uh, being in Stockholm at the Wingsuit Tunnel, where we, he, we were practicing a lot of compulsions and just basically driving up the numbers, just picking up, you know, working on all the small details to get, uh, you know, all those moves and docks uh, improved and perfectionized. And it was a really cool vibe through the winter because a lot of teams are there and uh, Germans, they're actually the full-time staff at the tunnel. So the German team and us we were cooperating and helping each other and also the Swedish team and uh, and Mama Wings, this, uh, the, the French team. So it was really good vibes. And that was combined when we came to summer. It was more and more skydiving and, and we chose to have Voss in, in Norway as, uh, as our main base of training. Um, and uh, we were combining that with a lot of projects with uh, Team One Call. And, you know, we need to make money as well. It, it um, can't just be training. Yes. And for the final couple of months, or actually the final month before the World Championship, we, we, we moved everything over to Stockholm. So we were able to combine tunnel with skydiving. And uh, we were in the mornings at the tunnel for 30 to 40 minutes. And then we went either to Aros, north of uh, Stockholm, or Grichum, the main drop zone for skydiving and uh, put in uh, training jumps there. Back and forth, lots of driving, lots of hard work. There's much more of my conversation with Espen and the whole interview can be found on the Air Sports Promotion YouTube channel. Please click like over there and share the video as well. And if you want to be updated with all our content, you can click the notification bell as well. Thank you. We're in the middle of the qualification stages of the unique, funny and enjoyable Red Bull Paper Wings 2022 edition. Young enthusiasts and aviation fans from 62 countries and 490 universities are creating the best paper planes for this competition. The nearest events are in Poznan, Poland on the 29th of March and in Warsaw, Poland on the 5th of April. The last qualifiers was able to be watched in the mid of March in Sydney, Australia, where dozens of paper plane enthusiasts have been fighting for the win to qualify for the big final. The best pilot on the stage, Australian Cameron Clark, had the privilege to fly aerobatics with great Red Bull race pilot Mike Gullion and the Red Bull website released his tutorial and best tips article how to create the best flying paper plane. And now we have two important news items from the FAI. First of all, from the hot air ballooning community, and second, from the world of sailplanes. Take a look. The FAI Ballooning Commission announced the launch of the new FAI Hot Air Balloon World Ranking List. The new design of the WRL was developed in conjunction with Watch Me Fly to create a better way for the world rankings to be updated more frequently. You can find it on the watchmefly.net forward slash world rankings website. And the second news is the announcement of the new International Gliding Committee Pilot of the Year title, which this year goes to German pilot Simon Schroeder. He was awarded the cup for his outstanding performance at the 2021 Standard Class FEI World Gliding Championships in Montluchon, France, where he gained the most achievable points. This achievement followed his win at the FEI World Junior Championships in Hungary in this standard class. It's time for my second special guest this week, an absolute legend and a good friend of mine. Addicted to skydiving since a very young age and in 1995, he became the first civilian to skydive from the stratosphere when he jumped from a plane at an altitude of 41,667 feet. He has flown in 25 of the world's wind tunnels, won more than 51 gold medals from various international skydiving competitions, trained no less than 14 world championship skydivers from around the world. The number of his success is countless. Let's check out what he's doing right now. And this is the godfather of free fly, Olav Zipser. Skydive retirement, eh? Well, sort of. It's a, it's a COVID time. You know, people have uh, very hard uh, travel restrictions here coming to Thailand. I have a nice new, brand new drop zone, nice Kodiak, everything brand new, very posh drop zone built by rich people 10 kilometers away, right on the beach. It's beautiful. I invite everyone as soon as COVID time is finished, come and join me here. Uh, but for now, just stay away and, uh, and uh, wait a little bit longer. Thailand is very strict on their, uh, on their COVID measurements, you know, but it's getting better. Where, where exactly are you in Thailand? 
Well, if you would look at the map, you would look at Bangkok and then you would uh, go top, bottom right, you know, towards Cambodia, you know. The best landmark here is Koh Samet, very famous. Koh Samet used to be a party island, uh, not so much anymore. Uh, Koh Samet is uh, pretty much on that beach area there. There are many beautiful little islands with coral reefs and no tourists. Fantastic. You, your first jump, was it something you'd considered well, or it, it, out of the blue or what? You know what? I, it didn't start. It started in Germany. It didn't. Uh, I was living in Germany. I was a dentist, uh, a dental technician in training. Finished my stats exam, going for the dentist license, and um, wanted to go hang gliding as one of my vacation booking, like people do. You know, they book in advance and make a vacation. So I was interested in some flying, going hang gliding. I was uh, close to twenty years old. Um, and there was no hang gliding courses available. So travel agencies suggested go to Holland, go do skydiving. And that's what I signed up for by out of the blue. I had no, no friends, no one in my family. It was just uh, by funny choice. So travel agency did it for me, basically. So I guess this might be one of the longest interviews I've done on Air Sports News. And you can catch it and check it all out on our Air Sports Promotion YouTube channel. And if you want to as well, please click like and share buttons as well. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <sighs> NASA has officially extended flight operations for its Mars helicopter Ingenuity through till September, according to an announcement from the agency's JPL lab on Tuesday. Ingenuity, which travelled to Mars on board the Perseverance rover, recently completed its 22nd successful flight. The rotorcraft's future flights will focus on supporting Perseverance as it explores the Jezero crater by providing routing assistance, assessing potential science targets and imaging features beyond the rover's reach. Ingenuity became the first aircraft to operate from the surface of another planet when it took off for the first time in April 21. It has currently logged over 38 minutes in flight and travelled almost 3 miles. <sighs> So the last news item this week is something really special for our Aero modeler fans. So the FPV drone market has accustomed us to the fact that we can observe what the drone is doing in the air from the position of the first person using the little sports cameras mounted onto it. Actually, a lot of the classic Aero modelers use the onboard cameras as well. But what about a new idea from the Motion Sick Company? Take a look. For the first time, an aero modeling company combined virtual reality goggles with the moving camera head mounted in the cockpit of the radio controlled model. Moving one's head on the ground forces the camera in the plane to move the same way, which creates a feeling of really being on board, and it looks absolutely amazing. Okay, let's move on to our March Hall of Fame section. On the 17th of March 1929, Louis Thowden, flying a Beach Traveler 3000 over Oakland, California, set a new FEI world record for duration, staying aloft for 22 hours and 3 minutes. The flight broke the previous record which had been set 5 weeks earlier by Evelyn Trout. On the 19th of March 1937, after a 15 hour 47 minute overnight flight from Oakland, California, Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Electra was placed in a hangar at Wheeler Army Airfield, Honolulu for maintenance and repair. During the flight, a propeller pitch change mechanism had failed. On the 20th of March 1966, in the high desert of Southern California, test pilot Jack Zimmerman flew the third prototype light observation helicopter to set an FEI world record for distance over a closed circuit without landing of 1,700.12 kilometers. 53 years later, this record still stands. On the 21st of March 1962, a black bear named Yogi was ejected from a supersonic conveyor hustler to test the escape capsule. Ejected at 35,000 feet, the bear landed unharmed 7 minutes 49 seconds later. I wouldn't like to be around that bear. <laughs> It landed, would you? That's it, guys. Next episode of Air Sports News is scheduled for next Wednesday. In the meantime, please check our social media channels for all the latest content and interviews. We actually post content every day apart from Monday. And I'm leaving you today with an amazing summary video from Stephen Lewis, who has made tons of base jumps in England, Wales, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, and Switzerland during the last 12 months. We'll see you back here again next week. Stay safe and keep your eyes on the skies.